Hey, this is David with Tricky Talk, and today we are talking about the Orville. So I'm calling this show After the Orville. I did some really poor recording of the Orville while I was watching the Orville tonight. And right away we had a guest appearance by Kermit the Frog, which is much appreciated. Kermit is one of my all-time heroes, and I can see that... Uh, Perhaps it is one of Mr. Seth McFarlane's as well. Okay, now I've re read a lot of, uh, well, I've kind of scanned over a lot of harsh reviews of the Orville. And my, uh, many of these people who have uh, been reviewing the Orville just don't get it. Some of, A lot of them aren't actual Trek fans. I don't think they're definitely not Seth McFarlane fans. Um... And I'm not a huge Seth MacFarlane fan myself at all. But what's obvious to me watching this show is that Mr. MacFarlane is a fantastic Star Trek fan. The Orville is obviously a clone of Star Trek The Next Generation, but with different jerseys, different jackets, and different words, like the Union instead of the Federation. And he does say fleet in the first episode. Um, but let's talk about the positives right now. Um, negatives are always fun, aren't they, for uh, for reviewer hacks all over the internet. We're going to talk about positives. Um, positive right one, right here, Houston Sage. This young lady is a fantastic actress. She's absolutely beautiful. She has such an amazing face, and she is fun to watch. She looks to be tiny as well from... I'm so glad this is a blurry scene here, for heaven's sake. It was funny, though. Um, it the Parts of this do remind me of a Saturday morning kid show on Disney. However, you can't get past several different things. The, the Orville has amazing production value. The makeup on this show is ridiculous. It, it is as good as anything I've ever seen on any episode of Star Trek ever. I appreciate the detail they've put into her makeup and her ears. I think that's, um, I think she's definitely playing the Vulcan type character here, although she has emotions. Um, she's super strong. Like, uh, at one point we all thought Spock was super strong, but he's not that strong. She is. I think her ears are great, and they put some ridges on her forehead. They gave her the really stark, fair colored skin with her black hair. Uh, they, she looks great in her uniform. Everybody looks great in these uniforms. The corridors, they're amazing. The uh, replicators here, they're fantastic. Uh, everything is so well done. It could be an episode of Star Trek. If they just had the right com badges, and you really wouldn't know the difference from a visual point of view. From a storytelling point of view, the Orville is right up there with Star Trek. They've done what... Star Trek did, and, you know, we can give all the credit to Star Trek in the world, but let's face it, Gene Roddenberry stole a lot of things from TV for Star Trek, so we have to give those things credit, like Buck Rogers and Lost in Space, and uh, a lot of Westerns. Um, Star Trek is a Western in space, whether you want to realize it at all, um, Again, let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the production value. The production value. Look at these uh, this unbelievable, unbelievable makeup. Now, as a fan film producer myself, I look at this and I just about hit the floor. My jaw hits the floor. What they must have spent on this on this series, on the just these two episodes. Good heavens, the budget. The they have a budget and it and it's coming through nicely. The uh, the people who are making the costumes and doing the uh, special effects. By the way, I've heard complaints about the special effects of CGI. Hey guys, that is a that's a model ship they're using. Okay, that's why it looks so real. That's why it looks so fantastic. The CGI effects on this show are great. I I don't understand what you're complaining about. The CGI is as good as any sci-fi show on TV. That's a TV episode episodotic show and the lasers here look great this robot guy looks great everything is amazing you'd swear it was star trek or better uh, that guy's makeup 
this red-headed guy, the Caliban uh, leader here. Uh, his eyes are yellow. His skin is red. It's huge. I don't see any lines, any... There's no sign of where they glued stuff on. <laughs> and people are saying that this is a fan film. Uh, this is way past a fan film. This is something that every fan from producer who makes Star Trek fan films has dreamed of for the last 10, 20 years. Seth MacFarlane is doing. He's taken a fan film to the absolute end of the world, and he has said, I can do better, and he's doing it. Um, the humor is a little bit raunchy at times and kind of gross. And in this particular episode, we have... Uh, She's drinking whiskey, and then the uh, first officer has a pot brownie, and the captain's drinking more alcohol. So we have a lot of uh, substance usage here. <laughs> and I think that the uh, acting is a lot better than is being given credit for. Uh, there's a lot of situational comedy, a lot of funny looks that they have to give each other, and those have to be done right. There's a lot of timing involved. It, and so, man, all those complaints are just a bunch of poops, you know. I, I think this is fun. It's great. Everything looks fantastic. Um, I think you guys need to go make your own fan film. And then once you do that, let's go watch the Orville again and you can start complaining. But good God, look at that. Yeah, this is Star Trek. Sorry, guys. Sorry, CBS. You screwed up. You gave McFarlane time to do this because he kept dinking around with Discovery and it took you so many years to get to discovery. What the heck?